people don't really understand how important the timber industry is and that cutting trees is actually <laughs> something that needs to be done to, mm -hmm. to get lumber and that there's places that do that. The planting crew to the thinning crew to the actual maybe clear cutting crew to the mills. We think about paper products, packaging, books, newspapers, lumber products like framing for a house. If you brushed your teeth this morning, the toothpaste you use contains cellulose which is generated from forests. The timber industry would be in large part the bedrock of most of these rural Florida Panhandle counties' economic foundations. It is for most folks more than just a living and a job. It becomes a, a way of life. Spent 27 years in the military going all over the world not knowing what we want to be when we grow up. And as soon as we found this place and what we could do with timber, it really has been our our calling. I'm Allison Brown. I'm Jim, and we're here at the Fox Pen Farm in Clarksville in Calhoun County, Florida. And it is the Fox Pen Farm Timber Farm. My husband and I bought this in July of 2015 as a retirement endeavor. We were looking for a place that we could be good stewards of the land and have the ability to have space and privacy. We fell in love with the place and we just decided that we're gonna give it much needed love. We knew that we would become timber farmers just by purchasing this property. My great-great-grandfather, D.B. Hayes, would have arrived here uh, sometime in the early 1920s when the Lumber Company constructed its, its mill. So right over a hundred years that my family has been here in Calhoun County and involved in the timber industry. Having been rooted here in Calhoun County for as long as what we have, there's definitely a connection and a sense of place as far as the community that we're part of and the, and the people here, this is a, a special place and special people. Uh, and also a, a connection with the land. Hurricane Michael made landfall on October 10th, 2018. It came in in the southwest corner of Calhoun County and exited the northeast corner of Calhoun County. Pretty much the entire county received severe to catastrophic damage. We experienced the full brunt of Hurricane Michael. The patio cover lifted off and it lifted huge sections of the roof off with it. We saw pine trees that are 60, 70 years old, three foot diameter trunks snapping off like twigs. People talk about the sounds of trains coming through when there's a tornado. Imagine for six hours and you just sit there and think, we, we can't take another one of these. I've flown in combat, been shot at, and never been as frightened as I was for that four hours in Hurricane Michael. I think there kind of comes a moment during the storm where you just go, I, I pretty much kind of don't think we're gonna make it. He's like, baby, baby, look at me, it'll be okay. I'm like, no, it's not, not gonna be okay. I've been pressing the I believe button and it's not working, <laughs> so. It still gets emotional it talking does. about it. Because it just, it's hard to relate it to anybody because you, you can't explain mm -hmm. just how, how, what it was like. So. When we walked out emerged from this thing, there was just debris scattered everywhere. Our old growth trees had been crushed. And we had managed to fight our way through the planted pine area and realized that we'd completely lost our planted yeah. pines. The whole thing's been destroyed. 
the Florida Forest Service estimated that there wasn't a forest in Calhoun County that didn't receive at least 50 to 75 percent damage from Hurricane Michael, with most forests receiving 90 to 100 percent damage, catastrophic damage. 72 million tons of timber, of trees, were destroyed. If you put that 72 million tons of timber onto log trucks, it would fill 25 million log trucks. And if you stacked those log trucks end to end, they'd wrap around the earth one and a half times. That'd be 10 to 15 years worth of wood supply for our local mills, destroyed in three and a half to four hours time. Whether you had a lot or a little, if you own timber, you lost it all. Most forest landowners that were fortunate enough to salvage harvest, and by and large, they were in the minority, not the majority. When they received pennies on the dollar, at most maybe 50 to $100 an acre, which prior to the storm may have been worth two or $3,000 an acre, coming out of pocket to clean up their property to reforest, to make it productive again, both environmentally and economically, was not something that they could recover from on their own. The outlook was pretty bleak. There was so much wood down and it was so tangled and twisted, you couldn't move. You couldn't climb over, you couldn't go under, you couldn't go around. I said, I don't, I don't know what we're gonna do. We finally were able to fight our way over to where we have longleaf planted. A branch had fallen down on one of our young longleaf, but being resilient like it was, it managed to, to actually make almost like a horseshoe around the branch that was laying on it and continues to grow, grow to, upright. to this day. So it looks very unique. He's like, I'm maybe down now, but I'm not out. It was pretty, pretty motivational, mm -hmm. brought you back a bit. He's our tree we call Michael. Nature has a way of healing and restoring itself in the wake of uh, natural disasters. There's a resilience that you see in these communities that mirrors what we see across the landscape. We had the opportunity to go to D.C. with the American Forest Foundation to meet with our congressional delegates. How are we going to clean it up? Mm -hmm. If we don't clean it up, it's a wildfire waiting to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get some help, no one's going to replant trees. That's Because there, there's no incentive. Mm -hmm. Through the diligent mm -hmm. efforts of the Florida Forest Service and Florida Forestry Association, Farm Bureau, mm -hmm. state legislators, and then our congressmen were able to push the legislative priorities through with the Federal Disaster Recovery Act of, of 2019. And it led to funding for the Emergency Forest Restoration Program, as well as the creation of a first of its kind timber recovery block grant for the state of Florida. 26 months and six days after Hurricane Michael, we had baby trees going in the ground. It was awesome. Our block grant planted 62 acres of trees. It enabled us to clear the property, site prep, purchase trees, trees are in the ground. We're super happy. The real heroes are the men and women that make up our logging force. They were able to harvest three years worth of wood supply in a period of 12 months to get that material up, get it to the mills so that it could be turned into usable product. And that was critical for most landowners to be able to start over. All of this work that we've been doing, all the chainsaw and all the burning, all the clearing, it's not all in vain. I think that we all have emerged stronger and with more of an appreciation and more of a sense of gratitude for the land, the living that it affords us, and the place that we live and, and the people that are here. You want to be a good land steward, you know that when you put them in the ground, it takes a lot of hard work yeah. and a lot of preparation, and it's going to take forever for them to grow. But the reward is you see them growing. Mm -hmm. And you know that if you take care of them, that they're going to be there for a future generation. The fact that we're helping 
the timber industry, or we're, we're helping the ecology, water quality, you know, those types of things. All that makes you feel good, and, and it's a rewarding experience. Like the Michael tree, you find a way around and, and overcome. <laughs>